Hey guys, this is Kendall Terry, and this is uh, dealing with uh, the, the digestive system. So when we're looking at uh, food processing, there's really four main areas that we would look at. Uh, ingestion, which would be the act of eating. Digestion, breaking down food into molecules small enough for the body to absorb. Absorption, animal cells taking up or absorbing small molecules from the digestive tract. And then elimination. Undigested materials pass out of the digestive compartment. Um, you got to get rid of the stuff that you don't need. So uh, there's two different types we can look at here. We can look at intracellular versus extracellular digestion. In intracellular, many people uh, would mistakenly say that we do uh, intracellular digestion which uh, they would be incorrect. Intracellular deals with food vacuoles fused with lysosomes to break down the food. And this is a, uh, a crude drawing of a paramecium here. Okay, Food would come in into a, a, a phagocytosis type situation. It would encompass that into a sac, then join that with a lysosome and break that down, and then those molecules would either go into the cell or whatever wasn't needed would be released from the cell. This would be everything's digesting inside of the cell. There's, it's just picking up from its environment. In uh, organisms like ourselves, we're more extracellular digestion. I know we think about it going into our bodies, but whenever we're eating something through our mouth, we're actually not uh, putting it into our cells. Uh, you could think of the alimentary canal as uh, still outside of the body. In fact, the lining of it, epithelial lining is uh, the type of tissue that covers outside surfaces. So uh, in that situation, you have an extracellular cavity for digestion, which enables an animal to devour large prey. So here's an example of like a hydra and an organism that it is encompassed. Of course, this is also, <laughs> sorry, it's the best I could do. Um, and as this is in here, then it's going to be digested. It'll be absorbed into the cells, then whatever is not needed will be released. Okay. In mammals, like yourself, uh, we have a digestive tract. Now, once again, this is a crude drawing, I know. Uh, but you have an oral cavity that we're taking stuff in. It goes down past the pharynx through the esophagus into the stomach. Once it's in the stomach, it will be mixed around, and we're going to go into a little bit more detail as we go, and enter eventually the duodenum, which is the first bit of the small intestine. There, it will mix with bile from the liver, in gallbladder, it'll mix with pancreatic juices here for the pancreas and begin that breakdown process. Then in the small intestine here, it will be absorbed primarily. And finally into the large intestine, which will be the last little bit of the journey, which will absorb primarily water, uh, break down a few other things with the bacteria that live in the large intestine, and then eventually out through uh, the rectum and the anus. So let's break this process down just a little bit. So mouth to stomach. Both physical and chemical digestion of food begin in the mouth. So as you start to chew on food, your saliva will lubricate that food and it will also kill many of the bacteria uh, that might have been present. Okay, So it's a good uh, safety mechanism as well. There's saliva amylase, which will begin to break down carbs, especially those complex, complex carbs uh, in your food. And then food is also changed in this process as you're chewing it. So we no longer call it food. It's changed into a ball called a bolus. Okay? So then you swallow that. It passes down through the esophagus and into the stomach. In the stomach, it will mix with gastric juices uh, by this churning motion of the stomach. And that churning motion will happen all the time. And, and many times that's also what you have experienced when you, they say your stomach is growling is that churning motion of the stomach, and there's nothing in there uh, for it to churn at the time. It will be mixing it primarily with pepsin. Pepsin is an acid, so there will be a very strong acid change from your mouth, which is pretty neutral, to pepsin in the stomach, which has a pH of about 2. That's where it works best. So this will break down proteins. You have carbs beginning to break down in the mouth. Proteins will begin to be broken down in the stomach. So then you have 
uh, some digestion mechanisms that are taking place uh, from the stomach to the small intestine. So here you have a sphincter here, a pyloric sphincter, that is able to be opened and closed. And there's processes that will happen that will cause that to either open or close, uh, depending on what's going on from there on. So everything's being held in the stomach and churned in that churning motion, right? When we zoom in on the stomach, we find that there's actually these pits all throughout the stomach. And those pits are what's secreting the acids of the stomach, the gastric juices. So those pits produce the gastric juice. When we zoom in on those pits, what we find are a couple different cells. There's cells in here that will be producing a uh, mucus that will protect the lining of the stomach. In fact, if you start to have like an ulcer, many times what's going on is the lining of the stomach is being broken down. So there's a mucus coat that will naturally be produced by the, the cells in these pits that will protect the, the lining of the stomach. And then there's cells here that will be producing stuff like pepsinogen. Pepsinogen by itself is not harmful to the cells. But when mixed with HCl, hydrochloric acid, that will be produced by these cells, when those two mix together, it produces this protein called pepsin. Pepsin would break down other proteins in the body. So if your cells produced pepsin, it would have a hard time keeping that pepsin from breaking down the proteins in those cells. So there's a mechanism here that pepsin isn't made until it's mixed in the proper way. And it, by the time it's mixing, it's already out in the stomach where there's a mucus lining to protect yourself. And that pepsin will just be breaking down the food that's been swallowed or the bolus at that point. We can look a little bit more in depth at what's going on. So now food is leaving or that, that bolus is leaving. Um, at this point, it's called chyme as it's mixed in the stomach. Chyme is leaving the stomach through the pyloric sphincter into the duodenum. The duodenum, also heard it referred to as the duodenum. I don't know exactly which way is uh, correct there. And as that food enters that area, it's going to be broken down even more. There's the liver that will produce bile. Bile would be stored in the gallbladder and then pass through the bile duct into the duodenum. Notice here there's a connection uh, because you also have the pancreas that will produce pancreatic juices that will also use that duct, that common duct there, to get into the duodenum to break down. Let's see what it, it secretes. The pancreatic juices are things like trypsin, chymotrypsin, amniopeptidase, carboxyl, uh, carboxypeptidase, which all four break down proteins. Okay? It's also going to secrete nucleases. These nucleases will break down the, nuclea, the nucleotides or the nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. And of course the liver, which is producing bile salts, which is helping you break down fats. It, it, it does what we call emulsifies fat. It takes a big fat droplet and it turns it into a bunch of small fat droplets that then can be absorbed by the cell for future uh, or for further digestion. So uh, 80 to 90 percent of the organic matter that you consume is going to be absorbed in, in the small intestine. And when you look at the small intestine, once you get past the duodenum, you deal with these finger-like projections in the uh, small intestines, which will have, they're called villi, and they will even have these like finger-like projections on them when you go real microscopic called microvilli. And they will do this brushing motion. As food goes through the small intestine, these villi will go back and forth like this, and it causes all of that to be kind of spread out, increases the surface area so that that food then can be absorbed into those cells. Okay? Um, 80 to 90 percent of it. Pretty good system. There's some hormones that control some of what's going on there. One of those is called gastrin. Gastrin is released by the stomach. Uh, to cause more gastric acid to be released. So in the stomach, even in digestion, you've got gastrin that, that when food hits, the stomach will release gastrin. Gastrin increases gastric juices. As long as there's stuff in there that needs digested, gastrin's released, which increases gastric juices. That's positive feedback. There is a point, though, at, uh, in, the, in the stomach that once a pH is released, it is hit, it will uh, release a hormone that will stop gastrin, so that would be a negative feedback. Um, another is secretin. Uh, this is uh, in the small intestine. So as that chyme 
enters the small intestine, that chyme coming from the stomach is very acidic. That acidity could be uh, detrimental to the small intestine. So secretin will be released when food enters the small intestine and secretin will cause the, the pancreas to produce bicarbonate, which is a base to neutralize the acid so that it doesn't affect the other um, proteins or, or enzymes in the small intestine. A, a, a final one is CCK. This is uh, a very long term. I'm going to mess this up on pronunciation. Collect, let's see, cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin, or CCK, I'm sure I said that wrong, um, causes bile to be released. So whenever you get fat in the duodenum, CCK is going to be released. It's going to cause bile to be released to emulsify those fat. CCK will also go to the, the, the stomach and slow down the digestion of the stomach. It puts it on hold um, so that bile, that bile can work on those fat globules. It takes a little bit longer for fat to be digested. So it slows the stomach down and says, wait a second, let's get this digested. And then once uh, CCK is, is no longer sending that signal, it will go back to digesting normal. So those are some things that control. Finally, we get to the colon. The colon, large intestine, uh, the main job is to recover water. So all this process has had liquid involved. It finally gets to the colon. The colon's job is to uh, pull all the water out of that leftover material, reabsorb that water, because that's beneficial to your body. You don't want to lose that much water. And then you'll have bacteria also in the large intestine that will help break down minor things that are left over. Uh, it's actually one of the areas that we get a lot of vitamin K is through the bacteria that are breaking down some of those food molecules and they release vitamin K that's then reabsorbed uh, in the large intestine. And then finally, what's left over, what's finally compacted out will be uh, leaving the body as feces. Um, so as the body goes through different things here uh, in the colon, you get the different side effects of that. Uh, if it compacts too much at one time, that's constipation. If it's not recovering that water very good, that's diarrhea, and you know the different uh, effects of that.